Of course, there are always motifs. And I want to get to them here before we transfer over to Art Moderne, which is a little bit different. Now, there are certain motifs that will be common to both. In fact, really, all of these motifs are going to be common to both at some level. The first we're looking at is known as the sunrise or sunburst. It's one of those motifs that just screams Art Deco. It's often seen, for example, in some of those stepped lights and that sort of thing. We'll get to the stepped fan uh, later on, which is kind of a variant of our sunrise and sunburst. It's used over doors. You'll see it in elevators or over elevators from a lot of buildings in the period. We'll see a lot of geometric design, the use of chevrons, the use of zigzags, or straight lines. These are really, really common at the time. They're really taking some of the ideas of, for example, the arabesque, that very busy style, and they're translating it into these very simple geometric forms, which really cleans it up and gives it this very peculiar aesthetic. It really speaks to the mechanization of society, this idea that with standardization, all things are possible. We will also see the stepped fan form, which I kind of alluded to earlier. It plays off of the sunburst idea, and what you typically see is three to five layers of steps. So here, these are wall sconces, and what we have is our inverted triangle, and then we have a series of steps coming off of it. It's a clean and classic form, and one that, again, still works for modern aesthetics. They will also constantly refer back to ideas of industry or technology. These will be key elements because there are huge innovations going on. Air travel, the car, uh, the use of factories and electrification of factories. So you're not relying on being near water to make your factory work. And so we see things like here we have what is clearly a wheel, uh, industrial wheel running. And here we see the use of the car, even though it's in this very classical form. We have this semi-nude male figure. He's clearly holding what appears to be some kind of uh, lever. So he's maybe working the factory. And then we have the streamlined car, which is going to be the fruit of his labor. Electricity is huge. Now, electricity, of course, has been invented. It's more of a turn-of-the-century idea. But by the time we get into Art Deco, everyone has use of it. It's going to become ubiquitous. And so it becomes this key element. People are really tied into it. And they like the idea of electricity as this great savior, a uh, savior of civilization, making their lives easier in ways that they can only then start to comprehend. And so what you'll see is depictions like this, literally a depiction of electricity in uh, sort of a male form, this uh, interesting figure here. Also, you will see the use of this deep or electric blue, and that's very common to Art Deco. It always speaks to or refers to electricity. We'll also see Streamline. This is more Art Modern than Art Deco, although in the U.S. we tend to look at it as purely Art Deco, and at least today. And the streamlining is going to show up everywhere. You remember that DC-3, that aircraft I showed you earlier, has very similar lines to, for example, this train engine. It gives a sense of speed, a sense that we can do anything through technology if we just streamline it enough. And that's going to be key to understanding this motif. It speaks to speed. It speaks to modernity. And so you're going to see it really commonly all the way through the 1950s and 60s, a period that gets us all the way from the earliest practical commercial travel on aircraft to putting a man on the moon. We'll also see the use of figures on a regular basis. These are generally personifications, allegorical personifications. So they represent a broad abstract idea, maybe justice as we see on the right, this being 
in the doors of a courthouse. Kind of a terrifying version of justice. A semi-nude woman holding a massive sword. Or over here on the right, we see a man, this is actually in Ohio, uh, on a bridge holding a car, speaking to that mechanization, that interest in technology. And the figure is going to be interesting here because they will also be used in fascist settings during this period. Of course, we'll see the rise of fascism in the 1920s and 30s in Europe, and they will latch on to that. And you'll see a lot of fascist figures that take on Art Deco forms. And when we look at these figures, they are simplified, generalized figures. So there's nothing really indicating who this particular person is. He has two eyes, a general nose, a general mouth, but it lacks the personality. It's got a sense of stoicism about it that is going to speak to both the stoicism of the Great Depression and Art Deco in this period, but it's also going to speak to fascism in Europe, hence the connection.